forge your inner armor. Welcome to the Inner Armor Podcast with Dr. Timothy Royer, where we explore ways to train our brains and bodies to become dynamically resilient so that we can all, from professional athletes to ordinary people, perform at our potential. Welcome back to the Inner Armor Podcast. My name is Greg Smith, and I am joined remotely today by Dr. Royer, who's traveling and joining us by phone. But I'm sitting with an interesting guest. We have done a number of series on this podcast. We've talked about how the brain and nervous system impacts the performance of athletes in a variety of sports at a variety of levels. We've talked about how it impacts the performance of students everything from grade school through high school through college. We've talked about how it impacts people in a wide variety of life applications. But today we're going to begin a series of episodes about how the brain and the nervous system impacts performance in the business world. And we're going to be having a series of conversations with some business leaders. And I am sitting here with one of those leaders. Doc, as I said, is joining us by phone. But Doc, would you like to introduce our guest today? Yes, I would. Delighted. First of all, it's good to be with all the listeners. And even though I'm remote, I feel like I'm right at Tom's place (laughs) with you. And I've been doing some traveling lately. Just got back from Cleveland and Detroit. Was with the 49ers in Cleveland. Unfortunate loss yesterday. But then was also in Detroit for the Detroit Marathon, where my daughter... Audrey just uh, completed her first marathon. That was kind of fun. But we're back here in Charlotte and really excited about starting this series because uh, some of my uh, dear friends that I've developed over the years have come out of the business space. Uh, I don't just work with athletes all the time. And Tom is at the top of that list. Tom and I go back close to 20 some years Mm -hmm. and it's just been an amazing journey i'd like to say that he's learned more from me than i have from him but that's not the case tom has taught me so many different things just in the world of business but in relationships and just general wisdom in life and so i think it's a real treat for our listeners to be able to join in our discussion with with tom today And Tom, do you mind sharing? I know we've known each other for a long time, but can you share a little bit about your life in the business space, what you've done over the years, what you're doing, just to kind of set the tone? We're going to be talking about to different people in different arenas in business, but can you talk particularly about yours? I certainly can. Thanks for having me, by the way. This is fun. To me, business is always about transactions and A lot of life is transactional, and I was raised in a family where both parents were entrepreneurial by nature. My dad, Uh Dutch, first-generation immigrant, and literally changed the way that I would think. And now it pays dividends now that I'm 68 years old. So I got into the family business when I was young, worked summers, went to college, graduated with a business administration degree from Hope College. Went into the family business, which was gravel pits and cement companies and asphalt company. And from that, we started doing mobile home parks to keep our crews busy in the late fall and early spring. And then ended up really selling everything except for mobile home parks. And I developed and managed those for many years and then rolled them into a REIT, a real estate investment trust. And... Yeah, right now I'm, I, the, I think I'm retired, but I really am not because there's lots of fun <laughs> things to do and lots of things to think about. And I mean, that's the real quick synopsis of what I've done over my lifetime, at least business-wise, and you can ask me anything you'd like. Yeah. So what do you think in this space, and you're interacting, you've been on boards and a variety, I mean, with all mm-hmm. kinds of different business people, like, what do you think are like the top kind of three things that people who are successful in business, what do you think those are the, I mean, there's a lot of differences, but Mm -hmm. are there any like top three things that jump out at you or two things Mm -hmm. that you would say, 
these are like super important for anybody that might be thinking about mm -hmm. business or somebody who's kind of halfway through their experience and it's not going well and they maybe need to tighten up on some things. You know, what do you think are the, those highlights? Because you're kind of not completely on the other end of this, but mm -hmm. you're very successful at what you've done. And, you know, what do you think has been helpful in that? I, I think one of the most interesting things is how people in leadership view other people. Hmm. For the ones that I feel are really most successful over the long haul, value the lowest person on their org chart every bit as much as they do anybody else. Mm. And I think if you care about people, you care about how they are, you'll build a better rapport, you'll build tighter teams, you'll have the ability to do all kinds of things that your opponents, which is what they are, they're not thinking about those things. So I want a team that's resilient and loyal and well-trained. And that, if I don't have the right leader in the front place, in the front spot, in the top spot, everything else kinds of falls apart to me. And that, so that appreciation of the person, mm -hmm. no matter where they are in the company, which is probably hard as a business person mm -hmm. where you're having this kind of always one step ahead, one, you know, mm -hmm. moving this entity forward, but understanding how the relationships, how you view those people as not commodities, but maybe as, but as unique people with their strengths and weaknesses. All, all creations of God made in his image, everybody matters. And I think if you do that and if you hire those kinds of people, you'll have a better team, better, better ability to pivot when things go wrong. I like the way that we affirm each other and said, it sounds like a kumbaya thing. It is. Yeah. Because if mm -hmm. you hire the right people and put them in the right spots, then you're going to see all kinds of things happen. And so there's two types of people to get back to the original question. There mm -hmm. are two types of people that I see in leadership. One is that one. And the others, they appear from the outside and it would be extremely narcissistic. They don't really care about anything but the number. Mm -hmm. and, and I know those are both they're extremes, but if I have to have it in the center, I'd still want to lean a little bit towards the empathetic because I think they make better leaders. And if you want to know why I think you can be a better leader if you do neurofeedback, I'll be happy to talk about that because I think that is the that's the Easter egg. Then when yeah. you, when you open it, whoa, everything changes. And let's I want to get there in just a minute. Sure. Any other things? As far as mm -hmm. in the area of business, I mean, we know things in sports like, yeah. hey, this is what makes somebody a better receiver and that kind of stuff. But in business, this perception of understanding this is a person that I, mm -hmm. no matter where they are. And I always remember working with this billionaire who owned this NBA team. And it was so interesting. I would see him at games and he literally knew the name of the people like taking tickets mm -hmm. and his staff would always be like trying to move him along because he'd be having a mm -hmm. conversation with one of the ushers, mm -hmm. you know, and I've also had the opportunity to work with other professional team owners who they just kind of blow right by everybody. But it was really interesting to see this, the impact that, and the culture of that organization was totally different. And I think that person's how you ever, you measure success was a different kind of success, you know, where mm -hmm. everybody felt valued from the person sweeping the, the floor of the facility to the CEO or the president. That's a unique quality. I, Doc, I, can I ask a question here about yeah. that? And it's interesting to be with the two of you to get some perspective from Doc as a neuropsychologist mm -hmm. and Tom as a business leader. But what you're describing, that empathy, that sense of caring, that prioritization of people, is that something that you either have or don't have? What's the old, you know, joke about athletic ability? You know, you can't, the coach can't put in what God left out, <laughs> uh, right? That's I good. mean, is, is, is it the kind of thing that you, you either have or don't have, or is it a kind of thing that can be learned or cultivated? I mean, when it comes to empathy and care? Well, I think we're going to probably go right into this in a minute. What would be like who we are as a person and how we function neurologically upstream gives us greater capacity to be more present, which is very interesting that we're talking about this because 
in so many different episodes, we talk about being present, Mm -hmm. you know, the somebody that's present, that's with you in the moment. And a lot of times we refer to that in sports or in parenting or in academics, but it's so crazy that here we are talking about business. And the first thing that you're talking about, I would connect to a leader who is present, who is like, he understands or she understands that person and is with that person as another human in a relationship. And therefore that becomes transformative versus somebody who's like so focused on the bottom line, so focused on the future or the past mistakes that they, they don't really see the person in the moment. And I do think that it's a combination, at least as my perspective, I'd like to hear Tom's, but it's a combination of both. Sure. It, that there's some things that you develop that you mm-hmm. get from life that, predisposes to that, but then your nervous system and how it functions, your brain and your body have a big component of how well you can even be present if you, if you want to be or not be. And that might be, even though we haven't hit a couple other things that we're going to talk about on business, that might be a good segue, Tom, into describing a little bit of your experience with the neurological and the EEG, the neurofeedback and that kind of stuff. So, when I would be in, we had different investors and different partnerships and different deals. But when you get a whole bunch of people that run hot, they have quick triggers. It's hard. To, and we had a couple of decisions to make as a group that were not pleasant at all. Mm. And it was interesting to watch how everybody handled it in real time. Now, that's pre-neurofeedback for me. So I was, I had a really, really, as you know, had a very, very quick trigger. And when that trigger got pulled, I, we didn't know exactly what was going to come out of the gun. And, and and so the only thing that saved me is I just yelled a couple of times because they were yelling too, and we got things resolved, but fast forward to probably five or six years later. And I was already in a program with you. It's the only program yeah. I've ever done. And it's changed and evolved as technology has changed. But that's the first time that not only was the trigger harder to pull, but even when you did, it lit a fuse and you still had time to snuff it out before something ridiculous came out. So it lowered my impulsivity. And that was measurable to me just, you know, as a just a person walking around with no basis or understanding of psychology and certainly not neuropsychology, but it changes the way that you approach conversations. It had changed the way that I changed uh, how I would interact in relationships. And so back to the original question that Greg asked is, can you become more empathetic? I, I think you can. And I think it's quite easy. The word you don't use very often. Uh When your brain is running in that sweet spot and you have time to consider things more before you blurt things out or act impulsivity with massive impulsivity, that gives you that opportunity then to kind of be, and we use the word and you use it many times and people will use it in the, in the faith communities, be fully present, be fully present, be fully present. What does that mean? It means that you can live in the moment. You're not Mm -hmm. taking a break going away. You're not chasing little shiny objects in the room like a cat or a lady with a laser pointer. (laughs) You can stay focused on what's going on. And that is the number one most important thing relationally is people want to know that they're heard and they love it if you can understand what they're trying to say. And then you take that into business because I'm going to jump back and forth because it's all connected. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If I think that most things are transactional, you want to be loved, you you have to give love. You have to. Otherwise, you're just a vampire. Hmm. What does it mean to work in these relationships, business, personal, love, relate, all these different things? What does it mean to be fully present and jumping into the training part, which I think is so critical? It gives you a chance to rediscover who you are with a brain that is functioning in the way that God literally created you to be. And I can say a lot more, but I'm going to stop right there. That That's awesome. So it's like you can see this other version of Tom, mm-hmm. even 
15 years later, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he's different in in those interactions because Mm -hmm. the impulses aren't just flying out, but there's like a, a slowing down or how would you describe that? What is what what is the experience that you have in the nervous system when you're kind of in that sweet spot well it's hardly contemplative no one would ever accuse me of being that <laughs> <laughs> but you feel you you feel present it is a physical feeling it is a, it is a massively spiritual feeling it, mm-hmm. to to me what opened up my spiritual life was having my brain calm down so i could understand Wow. Uh, it, it was, yeah. and, and Tim, you've heard me say that before. Yeah. But it is dramatic in the way that my life changed. I, number one, I asked God to reveal himself. He showed up. And then I needed to figure out what to do with all of that new stuff, that thing, that fire hose that comes at you. Neurofeedback allowed me to do that. It sounds almost hokey, but it's unbelievable how it's changed my ability to fully absorb what's going on like right now in the room there's a lot of things i'm aware of i would not be aware of even two weeks ago you know, yeah it's interesting because in my experience in the business world graduate school working with business leaders mm-hmm. owning my own business the thing that you normally get from business speakers is based on the axiom that time is money is how much can we accelerate throughput How much information can I absorb? How many tasks can I get done in a day? How many hills can I climb? How many, Mm -hmm. you know, different plates can I spin at one time? And the idea often is that the more of that that you can do, the obviously the more successful that you will be, the more money you'll make. But what I hear you saying is that I hear both of you saying is that I can actually accomplish more by slowing down Mm -hmm. rather than speeding up. Could you unpack that on me? Because I think it's, that's kind of counterintuitive. You want me to answer that or Doc or both? In which, which order? Uh, both, I mean, but you guys are, I, I'm sitting in the presence of two really super <laughs> bright guys. So I want to hear both, hear the both address. Is it, is it really the key to get more done by slowing down? Yes, it is exactly what yes. it is. Because when you're, we, when you have that rich relationship and ability, you can apply that to anything, by the way. What is it, Tim? You could, if you were here right now, you'd see my hands are starting to move around. I'm waving. <laughs> but, He's getting excited. Here well, we go. Yeah, but, 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 but to me, that's what it is is that that depth of relationships, taking time to care, you'll be a better leader. You'll find better people to help you accomplish your task. You'll have a better team. And if they move on, because you care about them, you're going to cheer them on instead. It is a different way to live. It is a more generous way to live. It is a more kind way to live. And you can't do that if you're always pretending. Mm. And that's the thing that I think neurofeedback peeled back that curtain for me so I could attack anything else that was going on in my life of, with, with clear eyes and with a full understanding of who I am and what I'm doing and having really good friends around me who you accumulate over the years you know, and it's a wonderful thing. They can tell you when you're off. They can tell you when you're doing things right. If I'm not doing right, the good things at home, I'm not going to good. I'm not going to do good things at business. I'm not going to do good things with anybody else. I think it's the most important part, and it's kind of silly to even think there's a second part to it, because that's what it means. So, if you want me to say what is the secret sauce to success, sometimes it's being in the right place at the right time. But here's why I think we have a key. You have better, deeper, richer relationships. And all of us know that some of the best business opportunities come from people that we're familiar with, people that know us. It is a different lifestyle instead of running away because we're introverted or running too because we're extroverted. Those are all things, but that's not really who we are. It's how we present but it's not who we are. Everybody's got the same needs. They want to be loved. They want to be cared for. They don't want to be in pain. This allowed me to see things differently. And most of the opportunities that I've had in business, besides having a very successful father who understood relationships as well as anybody I know, 
that was part of it, but you'd always, you don't always listen to your dad because they're pretty stupid for a period of time, <laughs> when, especially when we're teenagers in the early 20s. And then suddenly, amazingly, they get brighter and we're grateful for that. <laughs> but to me, that's the thing now. I can stop talking for a second or I can talk <laughs> all day. Oh, I think uh, I'll put a little bit of a neurological spin on that in relation to this concept of it seems counterintuitive to slow down, have these relationships, connect, be present versus go, go, go. And when you look at it neurologically, and we've talked about this before, but just for people that might not know out there, the brain runs in all these different speeds. Okay. And they all have a purpose. They're not just, we don't purposely, we don't have brain waves that let us go fast just for no reason. We have them there so that we can respond quickly in a crisis, but we can't use those brain waves all the time mm -hmm. because we're going to, it's going to use up too much energy. And we're also not very creative when our brains are running fast. You know, when you're in a panic attack, it's very hard to, to be creative. That would be like an extreme version of going fast. But many business people, they might not be in panic attack mode, but they're in mm. obsessive compulsive mode. Mm. They're in perfectionistic mode. Mm. They're in these very fast brain waves, which are referred to as high betas, which Tom knows a lot about those. <laughs> uh, yeah. And those high betas get humming and we feel like we're getting so much done because we're multitasking, which we're not really multitasking. You can't really do that. We're basically jumping from one thing to another in a way that feels efficient. But if you start doing the math on it and look at it, it's very inefficient because you're burning so much energy and you're not really accomplishing anything to its fullest. And then there's the part of the brain that goes like really, really slow, which is so important for our long burn, for the ability for me to, to be able to do things in business or in life for a very long time. I have to have a good balance of recovery where my body is recovering. You know, a lot of people wear sleep deprivation like a badge mm -hmm. of honor and it and it's it's the worst thing you can do as a business person. Business guy asked me, Hey, you know, what should I be doing? I would be like, you need to be making sure you're getting nine eight to nine hours of sleep a night. What? I don't have time for that. That's the problem. Because you're not recovering. But then this whole thing that Tom's alluding to, this like ability to kind of be in the moment, to see people for who they are, to build into these relationships, that really comes from the sweet spot of electrical current in the brain where it's not running too fast and it's not running too slow. And it's really, it sits right around a speed called 12 hertz. That means the brainwave's cycling about 12 cycles a second. And this is a very interesting spot because it's not going too fast, like 25 cycles a second, like high beta. It's not going too slow where it's getting inattentive, but it's in this spot where it's, it's focused like a marathon runner for a very long distance, but it's very calm at the same point. And it's at that moment in time that our creativity opens up. So our creativity can't open up when we're in 27 Hertz when we're going super fast, we just feel like we're getting a lot of stuff done, but everything we enjoy that's innovative in business, that's creative in business, new inventions, this has all come out, come out of people who are releasing 12 Hertz at a moment in time that gives them these alpha waves that make them creative. And it's also what we need to be able to be present is we got to be in that, that sweet spot neurologically, which I think is, yeah, Tom, you and I have worked mm -hmm. a lot on these different brain waves. Can you describe for people what it's like mm -hmm. when the high beta, these fast waves are like taking off mm -hmm. versus when those are under control and you're more in this like sweet spot? And by sweet spot, we're not talking about like you're zoned out, yeah. meditating, Zen kind of like, yeah. you know, floating on a cloud. It, it's not that. It's just like there's still energy running that keeps this thing accomplishing a lot at the same time so that that the way you broke that down was very helpful when you're running too hot high beta waves 
you you just storm over people and you, mm. you're just plowing ahead because that's the only thing you can do because your adrenaline is blowing up yeah and you have to do something with that and as you were describing that here's what changed for me when i could slow down my brain and you have to do it with breathing it just doesn't magically appear you have to do the the physical as well but as you start to get that rhythm down if i'm dealing in a negotiation with somebody and i know they run hot because i'm fully present i'll, mm -hmm. just, I'll just slow down because then, again, then they get anxious and when they get anxious they usually make one or two bad decisions if they if they don't go down the complete chain and walk out. But you can get a better deal from my side anyway. Negotiating with people, it, like if they're really laid back, I'll I'll say some pretty ridiculous things, almost impulsive. Just to, that's a little passive aggressive thing we all understand. <laughs> but 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 the, because I'm fully present, I can read that stuff. I can see body language. I can see those little micro expressions. And I know when someone's uncomfortable before they even know that they are. It's not because mm -hmm. I'm a guru. It's because I'm fully present. I can see it. When you're running high beta, you see none of it. Mm. Look at it this way. You're trying to read a sign. You're going 300 miles an hour versus 30 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of simple. Yeah. You're going to remember a lot more about that sign because you've got time to react before you drive by it. Mm-hmm. I might imagine that there's some listeners out there that are business leaders, yeah. executives, owners that are hearing this and going, great, this is what mm -hmm. I need to do, everything you guys are saying. But I also imagine there may be some listeners who are younger that are starting out their career mm -hmm. and they're working for somebody who runs hot. They're working in an office or in a company where they're just being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and told that they're not keeping up. And they feel like they're being forced into that, like what's on the freeway, the, the fast lane, right? They're just being sort of merged into the fast mm -hmm. lane. Tom, what, or Doc, what advice would you have for that younger person in that kind of environment where they go, I, I, I think I'd like to slow down, but how do I do that when everybody around me, you're like, it'd be like you're driving down the freeway and you're the slowest car and everybody's passing you, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour faster. How, how do you find that space and what advice would you have for those younger listeners like if somebody was 25 years old right now and they're trying to climb the ladder that kind of guy yeah that man or woman in in my opinion the thing that matters the most is to do the work then before you damage your brain with because if you're working for a person like that they're going to kill you they will yeah. or you're going to become just like them mm -hmm. those are your two choices in the normal world with the ability to do work on brain training specifically, you can be more comfortable. Chances are you won't work for this person much longer because you're going to see, number one, it's abusive. Number mm -hmm. two, it's a dead end because it'll kill you long before you get to the next thing. And then you can start to creatively think about what you want your next move to be. The problem with young is you've got a whole lot of testosterone or estrogen and a ton of adrenaline, so everything becomes amplified. My view is, if I would have had this available and had the brains that God gave a crowbar to do it, which is a whole nother story, but <laughs> I would have been a, a weapon in, in, in college. I, I really, it would have been so much easier mm -hmm. if I would have wanted to do the workload that I would have normally done. But running the way that I do now, I can tackle things that are far more complex because I've developed the patience to get to the next stop. And failure is okay. It just means that didn't work. But if I'm running hot, everything is a catastrophe. It, it and I, massive shift. I think something when we're talking about this other speed, we're not talking about that you're sluggish yeah, or no. slow. Slow. And see, and that's the thing: as people get into this, it's either one or the other. Think of more like a dial, where it's going too fast. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to turn it off, but I'm going to like get it in this pot where the energy is so efficient that I am actually accomplishing way much more because I'm, I'm more accurate. I'm, I'm, I'm reading the room correctly. So instead of having to take 
five days and 30 emails to make up for all the mistakes I made up made in the meeting because I didn't see the seams on the ball. I get these things accomplished at a much quicker, efficient rate, but not in a frenetic, the brain anxious, tense, stress state. I mean, think of, we get back to athletes because we deal a lot with athletes. But I mean, think of somebody like, you know, a Tom Brady, you know, or a Michael Jordan, you know, you wouldn't say these people are slow, right? No. You would say they're like extremely purposeful with every single action that they take, right? And that's what makes them so efficient. Then you've seen other athletes who might be like superhuman physiologically, but they're like wasting all kinds of energy and they're scrambling all over the place back in the, you know, backfield because they can't like hold in that pocket and just, just wait for that perfect timing, you know, like that, that tiger ready to pounce. So I I think when we're talking about this, don't misinterpret it as the listeners out there that we're talking about like slow, like I'm coming in, you know, like Zen master walking in. No, I, I'm calm, I'm breathing, and I'm in the moment. So most of us, when high betas are going fast, we are in the what ifs. What if this happens? What if this happens? Even in the meeting, we're running like 10 scenarios in our brain, and we are someplace in the future, whether it's five minutes from now or five years from now. And when we do that, we're not, we don't have enough percentage of ourselves in the room. So I only have like 20% of me there and 80% is downstream someplace or it's stuck in mistakes from the past. What this type of training does is it puts you in that moment so I can push the what ifs away. I can push the what abouts away and I can be like fully there with all my God given potential. I, I think of it as the wizard of Oz. Um, yeah <laughs> where everything is just shades of gray mm. until the house lands on top of the wicked witch and when she opens the door it's in this vibrant massive yeah. color explosion and nothing changed except for the camera <laughs> but you, to me then you see everything around you and so mm. when we talk about slowing down i i think we're giving the wrong message it mm-hmm. makes you far more efficient instead of a stride taking a hundred percent of your effort it may be 99 percent. it may be two percent it depends on how you're wired but there is an easier more efficient way to get the whole thing the computer that runs the whole thing for everybody if you get that thing to run perfectly or in a more healthy way everything else changes and try to selling it to a business person it sounds hard because it's a tough thing to define until you've experienced it. Mm -hmm. But I've been on all sides of this thing. There is nothing more interesting. And I'm 68. I feel far more in the moment. I feel far more calm. I can see things better than I could before. Is it as good as it's going to get? I don't know, but it, you got to keep working on these things anyway. The brain is the thing that runs everything in our life. Mm -hmm. Why do we go there last when we're having a problem? We should go there first. If the computer is not working, you call in tech. Nobody knows how to fix it. Exactly. This is actually tech that can be used in a very non-invasive way. To me, that is it. It makes it easy. And now the technology that you're developing now and using, and I've had the joy of being able to use for the last eight days, it's so simple. And the results are so profound. Uh, I, I, I know I'm, I'm frightening my family because I'm following them around going, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You know, I, and it's not free. It's worth every penny and more. It's the most exciting thing that I've had to deal with in my adult life, it's changed everything for me. 
Yeah, let's take uh, these last few minutes and let's describe, man, we have so much we could talk about. Oh, for 17 Uh, hours, it'd be the most boring (laughs) thing on the planet. (laughs) The first user outside of our staff Mm -hmm. that have been able to actually start to use the newest technology we have, which I am so fired up about. You should be. Um, And so... Can you briefly describe and be kind how the old systems of doing this, the underlying principle is the same. We're trying to change the brain rate of activity and get you in the sweet spot. Were in relation to what this last week and a half, two weeks, again, we're doing the same thing. We're mm-hmm. just with more advanced Bluetooth, more advanced other things that you'll describe. We're able to get there a lot quicker. And in the last t- 10 days, I've literally, here's somebody who's been using the program for a very long time because people will always ask me, well, how long do I need to do this? Well, as long as you want your brain to be strong. But I have been amazed with the new technology hmm. that in the last eight to 10 days, your brain has actually gotten about 25% stronger in its ability to get into this sweet spot, which is just mind blowing like wow yeah so can you describe to the guy out there is like man what is this do i go into the clinic lay down mm-hmm. on the couch mm-hmm. tell him about my father you know what is this that we're talking about yeah. and what is it where is it before and what is it now so when i first started we had three leads and you mm-hmm. needed to use a cleaning salve first to clean your earlobes and the spot on your head where this lead would go And once it was clean, then you had to put a conductive paste on and stick the leads to your two ears and the spot on your brain that you wanted to work on. And the problem with being high beta is you're freaking out about everything anyway. And you're looking in the mirror, so everything's backwards. You're trying to hook it up. You're absolutely terrified you're going to get it wrong and have to do it all over again. So you don't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the the software was changing. And so instead of uh, just seeing something circle around an island or something, you could actually do different games. And then wild thing was when you could actually watch things on Netflix and watch what you wanted to instead of what somebody had you know drawn up yeah. in the lab. But you still always had to do that paste. And it was always a pain and I couldn't stand it. It just this negative thing, whining about it, complaining about it. Just for the listeners who maybe yeah. are joining us for the first time, sure. what you're talking about is the EEG electroencephalogram, right? Yeah, great. And That's so a good it's, point. it's yeah. this kind of a you know, headband or cap with the electrical leads, as you say, that measures the various locations on your brain, right? And so you, that's what you're describing when you're talking about this. And that's one component of the inner armor technology. Yeah. yeah thanks make for, sure saying, that for, thanks the, for, for some that. of our listeners who might be going, what's he talking about with the things on his earlobes and all that? Yeah. It would make no sense. So that was very <laughs> helpful. Thank you for clarifying that. So then you showed up last week or week and a half ago, whenever that was, with the Bluetooth. It, it is a simpler thing. It's a, basically a strap. It's a little head cap. You put it on, you turn, you, you, you push two buttons, you get your computer fired up and you're literally running within a minute, 60 seconds only cause I'm slow. It should happen <laughs> quicker. No, it really, it's quicker than yeah. that. You don't have to clean up afterwards because you don't have any paste in your hair or on your ears. You can go back to your life. I can do it sitting anywhere as long as I have the computer with me and I have the Bluetooth on the device turned on. So it's, it's, it looks like a, like an athletic sweatband, like, right? Well, yeah. You're between that or maybe headgear or something, if yeah. you grew up with braces and had retainers right. and all that stuff. Yeah. Everybody's got different ways, but it is non-invasive. And, and that changed everything for me because then it's fun. And then it's simple. I can't wait to do neurofeedback every day. I'm, I'm ticked off when it's over. No, I am because yeah. I, so when, Tim, when, when you say that there's a 25% improvement of the brain in the last eight or nine days, it feels like 7,000%. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about how it appears on a screen and how it actually feels in your body. Quick, quick question on the yeah. behalf of the listeners who are right. maybe haven't heard previous episodes or whatever. Uh, Doc, what do you mean that Tom's brain is 25% stronger? Can you define stronger how? And then how do you know that when you're in 
wherever you are, Charlotte or Cleveland or San yeah. Francisco, while Tom is here at his place. Can you talk about what that metric is and how you're able to follow that metric or get it? Yeah. So Tom is actually, with the new technology, he can use his iPhone, he can use an iPad, he could use an Android. And so I send, uh, via the internet, I send him his training protocol. And so I have it specifically designed that when he does his training, we're going to be re reinforcing those ideal sweet spot brain waves. So every time those those kind of 12 to 13 hertz are going up, the video is going to stay clear and the sound's going to be sharp. But the moment Tom starts obsessing about stuff, which is uh, a common characteristic of Tom in the past and for uh, many business people, is the moment he starts like instead of just resting in that creative stamina, long-term focus state, he gets in this crisis focus state. The moment he does that, the, the video that he's watching will blur and the sound will diminish. And that's, which and is, that's because the electrical signal in his brain uh, increases in frequency and the yeah. software connected to these leads that he's describing on his head indicate that. And you're able to see that uh, because it's a cloud-based situation? Yeah, because it's uh, Chrome-based, I'm literally watching the electrical current in his brain. Well, today I watched that from Charlotte. Yesterday I watched it from Detroit. And the day before I watched it from Cleveland. And Tom was in his home in mm -hmm. Granville. And I'm watching that in real time with the protocol set up. And in, he can do that any place himself. If he wanted to, the other day I did training and my wife took a picture of me because I, this is the kind of stuff I do. I was on an airplane and I stuck the headband on. It looks a lot like what you'd wear if you had a GoPro headband. It yeah. looks exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. It looks exactly like a GoPro. That's the way I designed it was to fit just like that. So it's not invasive. I put it on the plane and I'm doing training and my wife's like, you know, are you crazy? And she's taking a picture of me because oh, it's I so... Oh, I know. And she sent it to all the staff. I well, saw yeah, it. It was, I pretty, it was pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah. But Tom, you've been doing it yeah. every day yeah. because we're only doing like 15 minute, 20 minute sessions. Yeah. And, and you're kind of making it part of you more than you ever have. Like you've always done mm -hmm. training, yeah. but you're doing it every day with these 15, 20 minute sessions. What's that like to be kind of in that everyday mode? Cause I mean, you might not be able to do that forever, but, but what is that like to be training your brain every day? Well, I, I have a friend who is does physical training for us. We work out with her, and she said, "When you, when you get to be sixty five years old, people retire and they don't do anything." And she says, "They don't understand their next job is to get to get in shape, stay in shape, and work your body, soul, and mind. That should be your job." And so, I I, I took it seriously, and mm -hmm. decided to incorporate it as instead of making it a job, make it a habit, and just just to you're not going to leave the house until you do it. And if you are, you have to set a time when you're going to do it and you have to follow up on that. And because you don't have a whole lot of pre-work and post-work cleaning up, hooking uh -huh. up or whatever, yep. it's so much easier just to grab 30 minutes or less or 10 if you want. Yeah. But the payoff for the next three to four hours after you complete your training is, I mean, people will call it Zen. People will call it focused. People call it all kinds of different things. Uh, it, it almost feels like you're resting while you're doing things because mm. you're not chasing all these other things at the same time. I, I don't know if we talk, we didn't talk about this enough, but if anxiety drives the bus and uh -huh. anxiety is, is a reaction to fear. So if you don't figure out what you're afraid of, you're going to keep carrying your anxiety around. And in the same way, if I, if I don't do this, all these things that normally wouldn't bother me start to crank up and bug me. Yeah. And I have, if I want to be at my best for everybody that's in my life, um, this works better than everything else combined. There's no drug that I know of. There's no nonsensical, any other kind of, this works better than anything in its science. And it's actually proven science. So it's not placebo versus and all these other things. Yeah. You can actually see it in real time. It's not a gimmick. It's not a joke. Mm-hmm. 
And when I was talking about that 25%, yeah. that's literally in the last eight to 10 days, looking at Tom's volume of high beta waves, which are stress brain waves over those focused calm state that when I say 25, that isn't just throwing a number down there. Literally, statistically, mm-hmm. I'm seeing the volumes of those brain waves because you only have a finite amount of energy in the brain. It's where do you distribute it? Mm-hmm. And Tom's distribution in the last eight to 10 days has moved out of high beta more into this calm focus. And he's already, already was good with high beta because he's trained for a while. Sure. But even after all these years, your brain is still wanting to get stronger. And that's when we talk about that number, it's an exact number. Like, you know, we'll say that's 27%, that's 13%, but yours is right at 25 that you've done, you know, in eight to 10 days, which, you know, a lot of people I get in business are like, you know, I just don't have time. And I think that would be kind of a good way to maybe finish up this discussion because you've been doing this every day. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you've lost time do you feel like you're farther behind because you've been doing this or can you speak to what your what your experience has been by i mean you had to add something to your schedule so what do you think that's done well two two things for me number one because you're more focused and you're more calm think nothing takes as long you don't deliberate Mm. When, when you're thinking about something you get to the finish line a lot quicker because you're not distracted I want to say think one thing about the 25%, call it whatever number you want it to be. Who in their right mind would think you could go to the gym eight days in a row and be 25% stronger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's so insane about what you're saying. Yes, yeah. And, and my brain is not special. It is what it is. It started where it started. But if you can get a 25% return <laughs> in eight days, and will that continue? No, it can't. Because we're going to get, right. there's a cap number for your brain. I don't know what it is yet because we haven't found it. Mm-hmm. But to me, that's the most important thing. You can get so much farther, so much quicker than you could using this system. And it's not fair to call it a system because it changes all the time depending on what thoughts, what do you learn differently? What are you looking at differently? You expand. And what I love about the way, Tim, that you look at life is this, in science is, this is all we get to know for today, but there's always tomorrow. Yep. You're always trying to figure something else out. And that's what I think gives you such a huge competitive difference with anybody else that may be in this field. And I read up on a lot of people that do different things because I find it fascinating. It's the most efficient, effective, cost-effective way to move because there's no other way you can do it. Yeah. There is no other way. There's no drug you can take. There's no, nothing else works like this. The hard thing is describing it to people that don't understand from a business perspective, if we can just get back to this for a minute, it makes the difference about what you're thinking about when you are not working because you never shut your brain off. For those of you that are in business, you never stop thinking you're on 24 seven, no matter what. What if you could get 25% more effectiveness because Mm -hmm. of that? what does that look like? If you could could have an athlete in eight days be 25% better than they were then, who would not be doing this? Right. That's that's great. Well, we got to close it up. I could go forever with you, Tom, on this. Forever. Yes, thank you. It's a privilege to be here. It has been such a great journey. I've learned so much from you over the years. And I always appreciate your generosity and just how you're helping us move forward and we wouldn't be where we are if it wasn't for for your encouragement and guidance along the way so thank you thank you and i hope our listeners can pull some things out of what we discussed and understand that whatever you think your ceiling is it's higher than that i can guarantee you that and i know tom would tell you that too is that whatever you think it is there's so much more in there and We want to help you get there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you would like to get there, there's a couple of things that you can do. First of all, if you want to understand the fundamental science and the physiology and technology behind all of this, you can read our book, Forge Your Inner Armor. You can find it on Amazon in both print, ebook, and audiobook form. 
And if you'd like to learn more, maybe get an assessment, maybe try out the program, then go to forgeinnerarmor.com and leave us a message and we will get back to you about maybe improving your brain and your nervous system by 25%. Wouldn't that be awesome? Awesome. Join us for future episodes. We're going to have a a series here with business leaders about performing at our best in the business world and uh, stick with us. We've got some more interesting things to come on this podcast and on our channels. This has been the Inner Armor Podcast. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. Would you please follow or subscribe and make sure to leave us a review or comment. You can learn more about Inner Armor, Dr. Royer, and how to perform at your potential by going to forgeinnerarmor.com.